And when I do theological reflection, I'm always wondering, how do we learn to love one another? Especially during this election cycle when there is so much discourse about not loving, but how do we build the wall higher or how do we build a wall around ourselves or our own little communities? How do we learn to love or embrace each other? That's a continual question, especially if someone causes harm to me, causes this unjust suffering towards me or towards my people or towards my group of women. How do we deal with Han, or how do we deal with embracing the other? I think my baptism into embracing the other happened in 1989. I was a seminary student um, up in Canada at Knox College, and they picked two students to go overseas for the summer. One was sent to India, another was sent to Nigeria. I was so glad to be chosen, but I really wanted to go to Nigeria that summer. But they said, no, we're sending you to India. So I kind of grudgingly went. I said, oh, I don't want to go to India. I said, oh, I wanted to go to Nigeria. But I went to India, and there it was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, one week I went to Calcutta. And I went um, to uh, where Mother Teresa's uh, Missionaries of Charity was set up, and I was able to go. And I remember, I just went in as a visitor. I wasn't really there to do anything at that compound. But I remember sitting there, and I was unable to move. I could not reach out and embrace those who are in the room, suffering, dying, and in pain. I am a Presbyterian. I guess it was like the frozen chosen moment. I could not move. A few years ago, Presbyterians, uh, we were sent, some of us were chosen to go to, I should not use the word chosen, but anyway, some of us went to Hawaii for this consultation. And when we were in Hawaii, we realized there were hardly any Presbyterians in Hawaii. They were all United Methodists in Hawaii. And so the United Methodist superintendent told us, oh, you must know the history. When the Presbyterians and the United Methodists were getting together and figuring out where they're going to send the missionaries, United Methodists decided to go to Hawaii, and the Presbyterians decided to go to Alaska. Alaska. <clears throat> And then we all joked, that's a new meaning to the frozen chosen. <laughs> but, but seriously, as a Presbyterian, I was in the con I could not move. And that was my first encounter of how can I embrace the other? As a Korean, my mom and my grandmother told about the stories of the Korean War. They told me stories of Japanese invading Korea. And I remember growing up, you cannot buy a Japanese TV, you cannot buy a Japanese car. How can I love the Japanese? The Japanese no, not only invaded us, they took our young women, young children, young female children to be sexual slaves during the war. So many, over 400,000 girls and young women were taken. Some were taken under the pretense that they were going to be given jobs. Others were kidnapped. So many died along the way. And so many died as captives. And these comfort women, only a few survival, surviving today. How do you love those who kidnapped our young sisters and daughters and nieces. These comfort women, um, I had uh, a fortune of listening to one of their testimonies. One of them traveled to Toronto about 20 years ago. She shared her story. She said she was so young. 
She didn't even know what was happening. Somehow they locked her up in a tiny little room. And when she woke up, a general had come into her room, got a knife and ripped off her clothes and raped her. She said she was bleeding so much, but nobody did nothing. And then the men came. She said she had to serve 40 to 60 men a day. How do you love those whom it's so hard to love? How do you embrace those who are foreigners? How do you embrace those who look so different or of a different ethnicity or religion or culture? Some of these things I discuss in the book and I kind of wrestled with how do we do this? I think firstly we need to overcome the doubt of whether Jesus really wanted us to embrace the other. Did he mean it, did he mean it or was it just a figure of speech? <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah. But a lot of things we think he, it was a figure of speech. <laughs> When Jesus told the rich man to give everything to the poor, we take that as a figure of speech, right? We don't want to give it up. So we have to overcome the doubt that did he really mean it? He really meant it. And I think we need to overcome the fear of the unknown. I think many of us, it's a, we are afraid to love and we are afraid to embrace those who are different from us. So we need to over, to overcome the sphere of the unknown. When I was in India, when I saw the lepers, you know, I didn't know who they were, what they were. I had to overcome that and I couldn't. And I think we need, it takes energy, time, and com commitment to embrace each other. It's not a verbal proclamation saying, I am going to embrace you today. It takes time, it takes energy, it takes a lot out of us to take the step to embrace. And then fourthly, I think it needs, a, it requires of us to open ourselves up to the Spirit.